Hello YouTube, doing a review on a new generator that was delivered last night. Still on the crate, got the plastic wrap off and uh, getting ready to unbox it and do some testing today. So we're looking at Champion made generator, 9200 running watts, 11,500 starting watts. For anyone interested in the model number, you got it right there, 10485. Uh, that's kind of where I've been seeing it online. Showing 11 hours, 11 and a half hours runtime on this. Wondering why. Coming over right here, which is why I bought this, electronic fuel injection. I can only find a couple of videos online of other people reviewing this exact generator. Not very many generators are fuel injected. Most are carbureted. Obviously with this, gonna enhance the performance, increase fuel savings. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing. Uh, you're looking at a high runtime on this. Obviously you increase the load that's gonna bring the runtime down, um, but Right there, fuel savings and obviously engine performance and not having to worry about a carburetor gunk up. That's that's gonna be the biggest things to see with this generator. So we'll unbox in a little bit, go through. You can see from the picture there, obviously you got you know electric start. That's pretty standard on today's generators. You got the IntelliGauge, go through some of those on there after we get started. Everything covered outlet, pretty standard. You got your outlets down here. Those are all standard on this. Going through some of the things on here, we already talked about the uh, running wattage, starting wattage. Noise level 74 dBs. I don't have a dB tester, so I'm not gonna be able to uh, kind of go through that. Again, you're looking at this, 9,200 running watts, 11,500 starting. Bought this generator because I wanna be able to power a lot of things in my house at the same time when the power goes out. Big generator, so obviously I did not buy this for it to be quiet. It's not going to be quiet, especially when you get a load on this. It is going to be very loud, so. Um, the noise level, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, definitely if you're standing close, you're easily well over hundred dBs. 459 CC engine size, fuel times gasoline, a little over seven and a half, uh, fuel capacity there. And it comes with 1030 weight oil. Um, so yeah, inside the box, you got the generator, wheel kit, battery it does come with the battery tender, which is great. Cause you want to make sure that the battery on this is charged, does not, uh, Discharge when it's not in use or else the electric start becomes useless. Engine oil and an oil funnel shows you the other parts you need to assemble the wheel kit on it because it does not come pre-installed. Obviously, like I just talked about with the fuel, um, minimum octane of 87. So that's your regular unleaded at the pumps. Um, some people have I've seen online, have done a lot of research on generators before buying this uh, in the last two months now. People ran premium, people ran ethanol free. If you can afford ethanol free, that is great. That's what I run in my in my lawnmower, in my um, all my power equipment, I, I run it because they have small tanks. This, you're sucking down full tank, almost eight gallons. Um, and you know, my local store right now is it's probably a little over five dollars a gallon. So you can see right there, I'm I'm just choosing to use Regular and leaded from the uh, from the pumps here should be more than fine. The biggest thing, as everyone said, if you've done your research, is making sure that if you're getting ready to store this thing or if you're going to be doing long-term storage of your fuel in your fuel tanks, you should be adding a fuel stabilizer to this. Um, you just want to make sure that the fuel, you know, help get a little bit more life out of your fuel, but also too, I mean, I'm hoping, you know, not to see any uh, long-term effects of the generator as well. I'm excited that it's fuel injected and not carbureted. Um, however, when I do do long-term storage on this, I am planning to run the uh, generator until it runs out of fuel and, and starves and dies on its own. Uh, that's, that's one of the best ways to store a generator um, for long-term storage. And, and that's actually Champion does recommend it, does not hurt the engine if you if you let it starve and run out of fuel, um, they say that's perfectly fine, or you can just add a fuel stabilizer and keep fuel in the tank. Uh, with that said, I'll get it unboxed. We'll come back, kind of show you some some things, and we'll go through the, uh, the review here on the generator. Thank you. All right, so we're back here. Got the wheel kit installed, as well as the support leg with the vibration mount. So instructions, walk you through it. Got the two legs that come in the kit. Slide the pins through. You have the cotter pin on the back side for both legs, as well as this is the uh, support leg vibration mount. 12 millimeter uh, bolts for both sides. Those are including the kit. And then just hold a wrench on both sides here to attach at both of these points. So once you get these two things installed, you can mount it upright. All right, so we're back. We got the uh, generator finally upright. 
Everything's installed. All right, so you got the uh, the battery here. It already comes pre-installed from the factory. You just got the uh, the wire there. I just got to connect it, add some oil, and, uh, and it'll be set to go. So yeah, in the pack here, remain items. I got to put the, the hubcaps on the uh, on the wheels there. Comes with the funnel. Oil is over there, supplied oil, as well as this is the uh, battery tender that comes with the unit there when it's not in use. So uh, we'll get we'll get some oil hooked up in this, and uh, and then start our braking period on it. Do want to note one thing over here on the back side for everyone wondering. Again, electronic fuel injection. So no carburetor on this unit. One one area to point out if you ever do need to do any maintenance on it. This is your. Uh, your one fuel injector here, and actually Champion has a video on it. If you ever need to do any maintenance or replace it, it's pretty easy. You got some, some screws right here. You drain, let the uh, fuel drain out and uh, you take off the plug and then you simple remove of the, uh, the fuel injector there. So pretty easy to access here. So overall, very happy with it so far and uh, looking forward to firing this, this thing up. So I did want to note before uh, we get into the braking period on this, so some accessories here that I point out. So I already pre-ordered, it's a 50 foot, 50 amp cord. So plan to run this here off this plug. So you got your, your four prong with your neutral, your ground, your two hots, uh, supply the most power to my house. So I got to run the conduit there. I got my, my Reliance power in, uh, inlet box. It is a 50 amp, got a 50 amp cord here. Um, I did buy a, a Champion, uh, storage strap there for this. However, since I got a 50 foot cord, uh, this this is pretty heavy and it's uh, and it's pretty girthy. So I ended up buying these uh, rapid straps. I believe it's the 28 inch. You can get them on Amazon. It comes in a two pack, so it's great. I'll use the other one for a hose. Uh, but that one fits it, and that way I can uh, keep it up on the storage wall without uh, taking up space on the garage floor. Got a um, the cover for it, so it's nice when you're storing it. Uh, help keep it clean and keep everything uh, away from as far as when it's not in use. This right here, I want to pull it out, uh, I'm still in the box, but the uh, Champion Storm Shield. So this will be nice, it's basically like a little tank cover that mounts on top of your generator and, and protects it from the elements. So basically wanted to buy this. I live in Washington State, so we do get a lot of rain, as well as right now dealing with a lot of snow, as you can see from the from the ground here from the car. but. Um, this would be great snow and rain if I ever need to run this if we lose power outside. So some of the accessories I've already bought for it right now just to give you an idea. So looking forward to running this again. Already right, kind of talked about you got your uh, your other common plug here uh, that you can hook up to on the 30 amp side as well as your 120 volt uh, GF, GFCI outlets here. So um, overall, like I said, most, most of these generators most of these plugs are all standard on it, and I'm looking to run the uh, the 50 on here. So, looking forward to it again. I'll add some oil, get the battery hooked up, and charge or charge the battery, get that hooked up, and uh, we'll start the braking period on this. All right, we got gas in it, oil's added, got the battery charged, hooked up. Going to go ahead and turn it on for the first time here. Go on and try and start it. I'm back. I'm just outside my garage right now since my generator's still been going. It's been running for about 20 minutes. Uh, that was the very first time. Very impressed so far with, uh, with the Champion generator. Again, electronic fuel injection, no choke. So um, the push button start worked good. I haven't used the, uh, the pull cord yet. I can try that here in a bit. But it's been running for about 20 minutes. Got my uh, space heater here as well as a tower fan. So I'm used to break it in. Uh, it got 750 and 1500 watts as well as just a fan to help keep the load um, to vary it. So I'll be working out in the garage for the next couple hours, and then I'm just gonna be going back and forth, kind of varying the load. The only thing Champion recommends is uh, keeping the load under 50% for the first five hours. So I'm gonna be using these two things um, to vary the load. Again, it doesn't have to be done in a five hour straight run. Uh, I'll be working outside today, we'll, so we'll see if we hit the five hours. So I'll go back down. It's gonna be pretty hard to hear me, but I got this one, I'm gonna use it. No free light there, that turn slicker on. It's on, I got the free light there. Let's go. All right, 
right, so I just finished uh, running it five hours straight while I was working outside in the garage. For everyone looking for it, obviously, add oil right here down at the bottom, and then there's a nut down here you take off. Use a uh, 15, uh, 15 millimeter socket wrench to get that off of there. Just finished draining it. As you'll see if you watch other reviews, um, oil actually looks pretty clean for a five hour run. Um, it does look very metallic-y. Obviously, a lot of people uh, very religious about how they break these in. A lot of people run for one hour, no load, drain the oil, run for another hour, half load, drain the oil, and then and then refill, and then uh, run it for another, and then change it after five hours. I just went with what Champion recommended, which was a five hour break-in period. I uh, just ran it with straight run, varying the loads. Uh, like I said, I used a, my heater, a fan and then I use the hair dryer as well to vary the load. So overall very happy and uh, this thing's ready for use so I'll fill it up uh, with some new uh, 5W30 synthetic motor oil and this will be uh, ready to go. Um, recommendations, I know a lot of people love AMS oil, small engine oil. I'm probably going to go with the Briggs & Stratton just because it's a little bit easier to find but overall um, I said the manufacturer champion, uh, like I said, they, they just give the specs for 5W30. You can use 10W30 or, or uh, dealer's choice on that. So hope you enjoyed uh, looking at this again, the model with electronic fuel injection. Very excited for this and uh, look forward to using this when needed.